Okay, welcome all of you. Um, I hope uh, you have uh, um, you have uh, um, you've got a sense now. I was referring in the last class. Um, I was referring in the last class to. Uh, I was referring the last class to the talking about uh, Walter Benjamin. Uh, uh, I was referring to uh, um, the urban, the bodily sensorium, um, things like that, gambling, this, that. And in the Indian context, I was telling you about uh, um, this. Uh, um, the the notion of the urban in the Indian context. It could be the urban flaneur. Uh, can you can you can you hear me? Uh, uh, Afsana, can you hear me? Um, so um, yeah. So I was telling you about. Uh, um about uh, you know the even in bollywood cinema you see the urban is a major obsession uh but also uh the you know in terms of uh, creation of a political subjectivity the urban is where it all starts if you look at the indian freedom movement some of the earliest uh protests and demonstrations that lead up to the freedom movement i'm talking about 1908 9 10 that kind of period where the congress was still kind of just not really sure about asking for complete independence in fact most of them were moderates and they just wanted dominant status for india they wanted to kind of live within india in this thing so the first time the the real kind of um, you know, clamor for the freedom movement also comes was from urban areas there's something about the urban Uh, but when you talk about the urban, I think the we we think about the you know people who have congregated there in the city, and a lot of them are people from the villages who came and and uh, migrated, and then they are living there, you know. So the working class comes there. In fact, even if you look at Ambedkar, Ambedkar starts his his activism, a lot of it, his conception about Dalit, uh, you know, radical subjectivity, which is kind of was uh, was a continuation of the kind of anti-Brahman movements um, started by others who were middle caste people, you know, what we today think of as OBCs. Um, so you had uh, in Maharashtra that kind of a movement, which is already there. So the anti-Brahman movement was there. Uh, already what happens with Ambedkar and the radicalization of the Dalit movement also takes place because a lot of it is happening centered around Bombay. And uh, so you see there is that uh, kind of a connection. So the urban, but here, of course, uh, we are not just talking in terms of the political subjectivity that the urban uh, creates. So the first uh, real protests and demonstrations against the British, which is like large congregations of uh, um, you know, it really happens uh, in urban areas in the cities. So it's Kanpur, um, it's uh, uh, even Merit, all these uh, areas that is an industrial belt, and Bombay and Calcutta. Um, um, uh, so, uh, but of course, here we are focusing on something slightly different, as we know. Mm. As you were talking in terms of when you are walking through an urban space, the kind of perceptions that are created. You know, a lot of people refer to an essay by George Simmel, uh, which was, I think, 1910 or something, even before Walter Benjamin. Really, and I think I mentioned that, uh, a little bit earlier uh, about uh, how um, uh, the there's too many stimuli in an urban space, and hence the way psychologically someone living in the urban areas uh, cope with this phenomenon is by uh, taking a intellectual approach to it you know an intellectual philosophical 
um, uh, approach uh, to life uh, and uh, um, uh, you know um, uh, so there's I think some connection between the kind of spiritual practices you know people do yoga uh, the kind of uh, urban spiritualism or cosmopolitan people doing being very spiritual meditation vipassan and all of that there's a reason why I think it's not really uh, ordinary villagers who who do that kind of a thing even though there's an older tradition of yoga and meditation um, which you can then track to older peasant societies and maybe to more to villages today but i'm talking about the the new strands of um, the the modern <laughs> now the modern appropriates these techniques of meditation and yoga and all of that so it's usually in the urban so there's this thing about uh, not being religious but being spiritual not really believing in a personified god but just talking about some kind of a larger cosmic balance and cosmic energy and meditation and then trying to be in tune with that so this that's also a very uh, so maybe what simil is saying is true because then you take that kind of an approach you know um, in india colloquially people say no like uh, if you're haggling with a auto driver or someone and then finally you cut the eyes and then he becomes friendly to you and then you decide on a slightly better price you know stick i won't give you um 100 rupees i'll just give you 80 and she says you know just give me 90 rupees and then you say you know so just 90 rupees neither nor 100 not 80. so in that kind of a thing then finally they will say yeah you know what is there that kind of an approach you know that uh, you are we are what is money what is this life uh, it is just a fallible life so that kind of an approach uh, i think is a uh, is something which is um, quite true in urban areas so the urban person um, deals with the scores of uh, stimuli that is there in an urban space uh, the kind of heterogeneity the heterogeneous um, experiences and the sheer kind of spread of it uh, and the speed at which things come at you and hit you you know urban um, space um, the way to deal with that is to then take this abstract kind of a spiritual intellectual kind of a uh, stance mm. but we are not in, already going there you know we are not really already going there to that spiritual uh, <laughs> intellectual abstract um, earlier than thou it can also become earlier than thou self-righteous stance we're not really going there we want to stay with a more basic kind of a uh, we want to stay at the level of the sensorium right we want to stay at the level of the actual not really trying to psychologically cope with it and define another space that will kind of uh, work as a buffer from the density of the urban experience but actually be a part of the density of this urban experience and that's where we are talking about uh, earlier and that's where we were talking about manto maybe uh spend some time in bombay uh and uh, what is that uh, yeah um namdev dasal um some movies uh, a lot of movies the uh, the figure of the tapori the Topori language, you know, like kind of Bombay slang, the Charles, um, that kind of street smart kids, you know, even in Gully Boy, we have that. And that's where I think today with the rap culture, and there's this thing, there's that kind of rawness that you find in rap and hip hop, uh, which, okay, looks like mostly coming from the black people in the US, but Indians are also kind of taking it up. I'm sure there's something happened, something gets lost, maybe not added, but something gets lost in that. But uh, mm, um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so um, so yeah, um, Vasundara, did you check something on the Manto thing? And and where is uh, Ozer um, and uh, Gaurav? You know, are these guys here in this? Mm. Yeah, Vasundra, you were mentioning some story or something. What is that? Mm. 
He roamed around the streets of Bombay, right? Uh, that's for sure. Um, and I think he was in that area, which is the... Um, uh, Gaurav, yeah, I also was confused. I think it was Tuesday, though, you know? I mean, I think... Uh, I also thought maybe it is Wednesday. Uh, I also thought that. But I think, I think we had decided for Tuesday, though. Uh, I think so. Uh, can anyone confirm? I think we had uh, done it for Tuesday, no, finally? Oh, wow, we lived there for 12 years. Okay. Yeah. What is that in the center of a red light area? I think that's called what? That's the Kamatipura area, no? That's the... That's the... Um, that's the... Um, that's, I think, close to, that's a Bombay Central. Um, there's a station called Bombay Central and there's Kamatipura. I think that's the name of the red light area. Uh, and there's the Muhammad Ali Road. Um, I think there used to be this old cinema hall with a lot of older, uh, people. Yes, Kamatipura area, yeah. Um, and, uh, where else was he, uh, uh, I think there was a famous cinema hall or a theater or something, you know, which some of these guys used to frequent at that time. I think Bombay was still that time a city. Oh, you see, you see, this is a Kumati Pura poem. Wow, look at that, you know. Um, so the, you know, so, so, I mean, you know, think about the way uh, migrant workers are leaving Delhi today. In those days, I think there was a time when the migrant population, the workers, the working class was defining, was not, was of course exploited and all, but it was kind of still defining the process of defining the cultural life of the city. So even Bollywood was, uh, was producing cinema that was really the in sync with the life world of some of these uh, uh, people. So there was a there was a popular dimension to the dominant culture in the city, you know, uh, and this area. And I think Namdev Dasal lives in the Chals, and you know he moves around in that. Um, uh, and uh, so no wonder he's, he's written a poem called Kamatipura. Um, so uh, so there is this dimension there, you know, that there is a. Uh, this kind of a popular life um, around, of course, there are a lot of the mills, the textile mills, the mill workers uh, there. Um, and unlike other cities uh, in Bombay, like, you know, in, in Delhi, the, the city center is extremely, uh, it's like the, the big bourgeoisie, they live in the, the center of Delhi, right? The New Delhi, the, L the Latians Delhi. Uh, in Bombay, in the city center, you have a huge uh, chain of factories, you know, you have a working class population there. So you couldn't kind of treat them as marginal. Ah. Okay, I've sent you something on Monto on WhatsApp. Okay, I haven't seen it yet. Um, so I haven't, uh, you, you might have sent it just now. As we He's like what? He was there in the 50s, you said? Uh, before, when was that? Because I think he went to Pakistan. You mm, uh, uh, went to Pakistan, I think, no? after in the partisan. Okay, you said it just now. Okay, so when did Mondo do well, the partisan? He went back to Pakistan, no? Then maybe he again came back. What happened? Because I think he, he does go back to Pakistan uh, at some point. Uh, you want me to say? He went to Pakistan and then he comes back. Wow, that's a... Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, 36 to 48. Is that 48? Am I reading it correctly? Uh, I want this. 
des mots. I'm I'm looking to reduce the size of this picture. I'm I'm seeing a huge picture of myself, which is completely unnecessary. I want to see if I can pop out chat. Okay, let me see if I can pop it out. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's uh. uh Okay, so 955 he died. Um, okay, so you have. Main chalta firta Bombay hu and showed the dark side of the city six times. Tried in court. For, uh, oh yeah, he was tried in court for obscenity. Started living in the center of Bombay's red light area. What is it called? It's called Badnam Bazaar. Uh, and later shifted to a posh. Suburb area with family stayed in Bombay till 1948 and then moved to Lahore till his death. Died due to alcoholism. His works are influenced by the culture he lived in. Monto's favorite biryani place is his Nakpada. Okay. Interestingly, I thought he would also give us the name of that biryani place. You know, we could all, all love to check if it's still <laughs> running. Um, okay. Uh, interestingly, gangsters and dons like Karim Lala, Chota Sakil, and Daud Ibrahim. Uh, what is that? Stated. Uh, what is this you've written? Their underworld career started their underworld careers from the lanes of Nakpada. That's the thing you see. So Nakpada is uh, important here. You know. Uh, if you don't know Nakpara, then like uh, there's a problem. Hated by many for writing this thing. Okay, that was nice. Um, uh, go to channel now. I don't know what I did. Uh, So, um, I don't know. I just can you guys still see me? I don't know. Something has happened here. Uh, toggle participants. Okay, I, 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 I see. So yeah, but, but what else? Uh, Gaurav, you have you have gathered something? Where is where is uh, Mir? Ozer Mir? Has anybody gathered something on this? Oh, yeah. Restore chat. Yeah, so anybody has gathered something else on this? So it's the same area, you know, where the dons are also coming out. So what we talked about earlier, you know, rice film and all, all the dons. Um, yeah. So, um, so we see that there is a, there is a, you know, uh, yeah, but tell us more about Monto. What did he do, man? Like, did you, did you get a movie or like them? So there are documentaries on that. What was his life like? I'm so used to just roam around the streets. Was you into gambling? I'm sure if you are drinking and if you're going to red light areas, then gambling is not far behind, you know? Um, I'm sure Monto would have a 
take on gambling the way Benjamin would have thought about it. And what about the this thing the um, the uh, what about what about Namdev Dasal? You know what is Dasal doing? Because Dasal written a poem in Kamati Pura. You know he's um, and mind you, you guys doing more conventional things, Dalit movement and all. Dasal is a big figure in the Dalit movement. Uh, you know. Um, what else? You know, talk about some movies or something. Um, why did the why did um, even films like Diwar and others? You know, they are really leeching on to the culture from these areas. Nagpara, you can say, is the cultural center of India. What is the cultural center of India? Is it the intellectual poetry coming out of Calcutta? Is it the kind of uh, things coming out of uh, intellectual work coming out of JNU? Is it the kind of uh, 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 nice talks and uh, seminars and conferences happening in India International Center, India Habitat Center? What is the cultural center? What is what is what is the kind of the to use more essentialist terms? It's like the pulse of the popular cultural period. You know, used to right. And and Nakpada, uh, be the Bombay lang uh, slang, you know, the kind of language uh, that became popular. I mean, you know, you can say that, uh, kya mere paas ma hai, that is one of the most famous slogans of India. Then why did you need an entire, a particular kind of a social milieu? Um, you know, for that to come. Right? Um, yes, Vasundra, you've written something. Yes, he used to take a, a paper and a pen and go into the crowded, crowdy. Okay, you use him inventing some words, crowdy. Crowdy <laughs> red light uh, areas. He didn't only observe people. He had friends there. Yeah, you know, I'm sure he had a lot of friends there. That's the thing, you know, Bombay was about gangsters and sex workers you know um uh, so um 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 but that's the thing you know but this entire thing is also happening gangsters sex workers but there's also uh commerce going on right there's business going on there's this some something called an informal economy but there's also big companies there there's also big money there. Uh, there's also the police there. Um, because a red light area means that uh, they are always uh, having encounters with the police. I mean, the police has a love hate relationship with it, right? So you have the state, uh, you have everything there. You know, you have the working class, migrant workers. Factories and these are all happening around the mill workers. You know the mill, the the textile mills. Today, a lot of the mills have been converted into the malls. Uh, all right, and so today, when somebody makes a movie, and that kind of a that social milieu is gone, I think that's when you have things like this, gully boy rap, this that, because Bollywood has to work with something. You know. Uh, so, um, uh, and then the dance, and then the minority question. You see the you see the caste question. Um, the caste and the Muslim minority question is also entangled here, um, uh, because it is out of these places that Muslim radicalism and also Dalit radicalism is coming out. Um, so. So one is uh, the kind of uh, social milieu which gives us 
right so it could not have this mere pass ma hai there was a particular social milieu right uh and then this is also the social milieu which produces namdev dasal which produces um uh, manto uh even the dalit the term look at this now you know uh so look at this after all the war film out of which the mere pass ma hai comes that is in the based on the life of haji mastan and that is haji mastan is also operating the same areas right nakpada and all this and i think uh, daud was a small junior chut bhaiya working for haji mastan and that's also the place where you have the rise of the dalit panthers um so the term in fact the term dalit itself so uh and and dasal and dasal is dasal is part of uh, you know part of uh, uh, dasal is one of the persons who founded the dalit panthers you know in fact i was in bombay uh, maybe some 7 8 years ago and that time uh, i really tried to meet namdev dasal he was alive at that time so uh and uh, and of course a lot of things happened um you know uh a lot of things had happened uh let me do a uh, breaking news that's that's breaking news for you बहुत बड़ा खुलासा किया मैंने अभी राइट यू सी नाउ यू सी हाउ थिंग्स आर ऑल फॉलोइंग इन प्लेस अब इट्स ऑल अबाउट नागपाड़ा नाउ वाई डू यू थिंक दसाल वुड हैव ज्वाइंट द शिवसेना right so you see the sal is from that area joins the shipsena so where is shipsena from shipsena is also from there right so so as you can see now it spreads uh this also collapses your uh the distinction you make between the left wing and the right wing you know uh
right? So you see there are all these implications are happening. Who is the Slayer? Sam the Slayer, welcome. Nakpara also became center for Shine Bar kind of movement. Oh no, don't come into Shine Bar, you know. Um, Nakpada can do better than Shine Bag. <laughs> I think the Shine Bag movement tried to contain the possibilities of Nakpada. So you are right what you are saying. To start with, I like the connection you are making. But um, I think Shine Bag is, is, uh, is in some senses um quite uh quite uh, you know quite uh, limited um you know um, um so but yeah but yeah i mean you know nakpada would totally pick on this would, would totally pick on this you know um i what i want to know was was monto so you see, all this is converging, right? All this Manto, um, this guy, Baba, Namdeo Dasal, and these are the big names. I'm sure there's an entire, you know, circle around them, right? But then the Sifsena guys are also there. Um, I don't know, is it a bit like Harlem in New York or something, you know? Um, that kind of an area. Uh, so... It's like Harlem, you know, uh, because Harlem is also that. Um, so the uh, so. So, right, so Bollywood who does that with Nakpada. So, uh, uh, so that's the kind of thing. Anything else you guys want to uh, bring in here? Um, um, a lot of the Right, so, so you see the, I mean, from, so from, uh, so you have including, um, including working class movements. So, so you have all, so including the left. So, um,
I done this. Uh, I done this piece earlier when uh, Bal Thakre had died. I'm just sending it to you here. So there is this uh, entire build up there, you know. So then, so what do we have then? You know, right from Ambedkar in the 1920s, before 1920s. So, so we are talking about say 1900, uh, 1900 uh, from the 1900s, which is the which is the. Uh, which is the which is uh, the the working the first big uh, urban working class mobilizations which happened around the arrest of tilak to the 20s when the first uh, uh, trade union movement starts and there are a lot of dalit workers who have come from the villages in maharashtra to bombay and they are dalit but they are the dalit working class you know it is their activism in fact in fact if you look at gail omvet's work uh, Gil Omved uh, talks about this, you know. Um, uh, Gil Omved's work talks about this. Uh, right, you know Gil Omved... Um, uh, so, um, so she talks about how the Ambedkarite Dalit movement would not have been possible without this kind of a urban Dalit working class base and their radicalism. So uh, the anti-Brahman movements was already there from before in Maharashtra, you know. Uh, so at the ideological level, ideologically trying to fight um, uh, Brahminism, that is always there uh right uh, but that had to kind of get that ability to take off ability to be radical and that comes with the urban working class right and then of course you have then from the 40s onwards all these dons arising and all that you have haji mastan this that and then the mill workers and then there's a very powerful communist unions that are there i've referred to that in my piece you will see, you know, which is the 60s and 70s. And the Shiv Sena, in fact, comes out of that. And then there's the Shiv Sena and then Monto and then Sentai Popular Culture, the Bombay, uh, the Bollywood lingo. Ah, upon ke saath desa nahi karenge. You know, that kind of Bombay, Bhidu uh, 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 Bhai, and all these things, right? Bhidu Bhai and uh, um, all of that, you know. Rogada, I think Rogada is also... Um, uh, uh, also a Bombay slang. Does anyone know is, is Rogada? For money, when we say Rogada, where does it come from? Vasundara, tell us. Who are the others here? Tell us. I think Rogada, when we say Rogada, I think it comes from the Bombay, that kind of a milieu, you know. <laughs> so it's kind of set the, the tone of the, for this country. What do you mean by popular culture? Uh, Rogada, you know. Uh, that is, uh, I have never written this, Rogda, you know. Rogda for money, right? So, um, um, so, uh, so you see that. So the, so the, when you're talking about the bodily sensorium, then you see how much it's working. So, so when Benjamin is talking about the flonier or when Benjamin is talking about, uh, uh, the, this thing, the, the bodily sensorium, gambling, this, that, and the other, you know, all kinds of the new kind of urban perception, the perception that comes. And so the mechanical reproduction, the technological reproduction uh, must be seen in the light of all of this. Um, right? Anything else people want to add here on the, on the, on these things?
and then leading up to the Bombay blasts, right? After Babri Masjid, post Babri Masjid. So you see, uh, uh, um, yeah, I mean, you know, the, yeah, um, Yeah, but the the mechanical reproduction, of course. Uh, but I was uh, I was trying to get you um, just lining up all the all the all the empirics first, you know, um, because we are talking about um, a city which we kind of know, which is there so much in our popular culture. So I was just trying to lay out the. Um, uh, empirics and I was just just as you put this comment I was thinking of the terror attacks for example right terror attacks that was when 2000 something 2000 what year was that terror attacks what year was that the terror attacks right <laughs> you know uh, so uh so if not, uh, so there's something going on in Bombay, right? Which is uh, kind of uh, connected to it being the, and that's why we say it's the, uh, right? So the people say it's a maximum city. So, Devauti, whether it is mechanical, technological, spiritual, um, you know, monetary, uh, psychological, all kinds of reproductions taking place in Bombay. Let's first get that clear, you know. Uh, it's a hub of our modern times. Um, right? It is a... And that's the thing. If we... By urban, it means that there's a maximum, let's say it's a it's a place of maximum technological reproduction. And if by technological reproduction we agree to say understand, but imagine we agree to say they understand by technological reproduction, a society where there's maximum interaction between people's subjective desires and subjective force of the people and the surroundings. If you were to understand technological reproduction in that sense, because that's what really is the point, right, of technological reproduction, that whatever is going on, the material surroundings would be laden with a lot of the subjective desires. So it's not like people are living there, but they are just quietly moving in those roads. No, they are making it their own. Um, so they are they are able to uh, grab it, you know, like in that example of uh, of uh, of Benjamin, um, where this guy would not, you know, that that the distance with the scenery is not there because the distance creates that aura, but the aura is gone. The guy wants to pause it. The maximum pauses in. By at the at a popular level, by the popular masses, has taken place in Bombay as compared to other cities. Um, right? Um, say if you take Calcutta, you can say Calcutta, large parts of Calcutta is also very cultural and all of that, but it feels like with. With, with Calcutta, the culture 
or the culture for which Calcutta was known for was determined largely by a Bhadralok, highly educated, highly polished, uh, you know, poet, um, very pretentious filmmakers who might not be that pretentious and nevertheless, you know, so that kind of a section, whereas that kind of a popular culture where you have prostitutes and dons and gamblers and poets uh, and actors and theater and the Tapori's and the Chawls and the Dalit Panther activist uh, kind of intermingling that you are not finding, right? Uh, the same thing with Chennai because even the South was like that. Uh, and not to speak of Delhi. <laughs> Delhi, uh, the popular classes are always pushed away, you know, be it like earlier in the slums in Delhi or something and later now you, then they were pushed out of all this Yamuna Pushta and all was just cleared and they were dumped in uh, Bawana and Narela. Uh, and a and lot of them into these areas where you recently had the riots. All right. So with Bombay, that maximum possibility of technological reproduction, if we understand by technological reproduction, where the subjective soul gets, uh, you know, um, gets, gets, uh, gets invested into the, into the material surroundings, that has happened. Uh, in Bombay, until today, Bombay retains that popular, popular. I mean, if you look at the urban scape of Bombay, let me give you a little example. If you go to Bombay even today, then you will find for a lot of these taxi drivers, you know, they have these little taxi stands uh, where a taxi driver. In the afternoon, after lunch or something, it's very hot, he's tired, he wants to take an afternoon nap, he has a proper space. And those little things by the roadside. But that public space has been legitimately granted to them. They have a bargaining power in the city that allows them to transform the city space. Where they can, there will be a little charpai or something, and he can like rest, you know, for like some... 10 minutes, there's a little TV screen there, some inner you know, surai, there's a pani there, you know, a place to pee, like that. In Bombay, you have that. I'm giving you another example. You know, I think I told you guys earlier that there's this guy I met, and then, um, you know, they're talking about the Delhi Metro. He's taking the Delhi Metro Delhi. He meets a lot of this uh, same people who bought from the same stop at the same time, but he never gets talking to them in Bombay. If you were to be doing that in the lo Bombay local trains, people become great friends. And once you become great friends, once you are a collective, then collectively you can create some pressure on the authorities to say that, no, you guys are not going to do this. You know, don't do this. Don't uh, block this little passageway because we all use it, you know. So there's like more intermixture between what the popular masses want and the way the city is. Now, this is at a broad level, I'm saying, but at the more micro level, when you're talking about little, little things, uh, say even the language, what they did with the Marathi-Hindi mix, the technological reproduction, um, so all of this. So then the cinema, talking about Benjamin and cinema and the technological reproduction, look what they did with cinema. The cinema um, got totally uh, like a mass phenomenon today with the rise of multiplexes in India. Rise of multiplexes in India, um, the, the cinema has transformed itself, you know, more experimental movies. In fact, in fact, precisely at the point when Bollywood cinema became more experimental and radical and kind of trying to address queer issues and all of that, that's precisely when Bollywood becomes elitist. So there's some connection between a particular kind of a experimental radicalist, uh, radical artist kind of a uh, creation um, um, and, uh, and, 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 and the elite, you know, there's a kind of a this thing and the disconnect with the masses. And then we say, okay, where are those old 
Taporia kind of Govinda movies. And they say, no, we don't make that anymore because there's a, uh, the way the finances work of Bollywood today, they don't need to really address this urban milieu, you know, that I was talking about, which is the small town or the Bombay mill workers kind of a, a social milieu that was constructed because today the films are distributed uh, through multiplexes that are all over the world. They NRI all over the world. So at one go, uh, they can uh, just uh, simultaneously release it all over the world and they uh, they can get back their money. They don't need to rely on the popular masses and all these little, little cinema halls uh, like Golcha or Delight, you know, those kind of Sheila, <laughs> uh, those kind of cinema halls that were there earlier, Mikdut, you know, those kind of uh, cinema halls that was that is still there, the Reed Cinema Hall in Kashmiri Gate. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, somehow surviving. I think some people try to do this heritage kind of work. We should save the heritage of the city and also the, it's kind of still running. So you have the right to the multiplex. So in terms of then um, the, the cinema and the relationship with the mass that Benjamin is talking about, um, we completely could see that with Bollywood to the extent that it is coming out of places like Nagpada and all of that. So, um, uh, uh, so I think I think Devauti, what you need to do is that you need to um, understand the technological reproduction in this slightly wider, not a wider sense, in a precise sense, <laughs> um, uh, but in the in a in a contextual manner. Uh, that okay, that space, uh, that space, however, is uh, is. Um, is uh, what is that? Is uh, is uh, that space, however, is look away, took away in most uh, cities in post 40s times when to attract big capital, there's the need to uh, beautify the city. Um, yeah, I mean, big capital was there also in Bombay. Uh, so it's not like, you know, those were great socialist times, uh, that time. So, um, that is, uh, Parmatam Shah, right? Sneha. Um, uh, oh, Aman. Okay, Aman. Um, so, um, yeah, that's true. Post Fordist and all, but even... Uh, earlier, it, it's not like that was a great time, um, you know, I mean, uh, the larger picture, you using terms like post Fordist and all, the larger picture was, yeah, it is a planned economy, so-called socialist and all of that. Um, uh, but the, but I think the decomposition process hadn't really uh, happened so much, you know, where, say, with neoliberalism and all that, 1991, in India, there's a major shift, privatization, this, that, and then the mills uh, close down, and then the um, you have a, the, the emergence of a big upper middle class in India, uh, you know. So that's a, that's a very big uh, uh, difference. But yeah, I mean, it is connected to all this beautification and all that. Um, so, um, yeah, the... Uh, yeah, but but with Bombay, even today when you go, uh, that is still there. I mean, it has become so ingrained there that that is now declared to be the beauty of the city. You know, uh, you know, there's something called a Bohemian. Uh, so so maybe so the Bohemian quotient of a city. You know, so maybe it will fit into that. Then you can that becomes a selling point. A smart businessman will say, okay, Bombay has this great popular culture, this, that, and the other. Let's preserve it. You know, this becomes a selling. And that's what's happened with all the slumdog millionaire, gully boy, and a host of other movies. Bombay's poverty sells, right?
right so this can also be kind of uh, bought and sold so that is also there um so um um yeah um so um anything else okay so um um <clears throat> Anything else? I, you know, I think we. I'm just surprising. We covered quite a bit uh, today. So, what happened with the with the Babri Masjid thing? You know, what is the discussion of India without anything about India without a reference to Hindu Muslim? You know, God, where is the Hindu Muslim thing? What's the Hindu Muslim scene in Bombay, by the way? Those are mostly Bora Muslims, right? I think uh, I think this guy uh, on whom so many films are based uh, that uh, the, the the boss of uh, of uh, of Daud, uh, he was I think a Konkani. Uh, he was I think a Konkani Muslim I think or or you know so um, so even so after Babri Masjid. The things that happened in India, that is still determining the course of Hindutva. Don't forget that, you know, the serial blasts uh, and the riots that happened in Bombay. Uh, that is very important. Now, I'm not even, okay, okay, okay. Now, I'm not even mentioning here the, what Brahman sadhus from Maharashtra based around Pune and Bombay. Uh, from which you have Tilak and Ranade and this, that, so many, hell, lot of people, including Gotse. What Brahmin is that? Uh, not Saraswat. Saraswat Brahmins are different. The other Brahmins, you know, they are very important. So right since the beginning or even like, uh, even, um, uh, even before the freedom movement, uh, the Brahmins from this area are already important to start with, right? Going back to Shivaji. Um, those are the right. Um, so, um, in fact, when Gandhi comes, starts his career in India, he's really yeah, Chit Pawan Brahmins. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know what did the Chit Pawans do with the urban sensorium, you know? Yeah. What did the Chitpavans do, man? The Chitpavans. The Chitpavans must have thought what's going on, this kind of criminality, this kind of corruption. You know, um, uh, right? Um, this kind of uh, crisscross between gambling and this industrial working class and these dons and these Dalit Panthers and these uh, right wing Shiv Sena and these communist unions. That kind of uh, admixture, the Chitpavans. I'm sure if you look at the writings of, I don't know, Gotse and a hell lot of Savarkar, you know, is Savarkar also a Chitpavan? Is it Chitpavan? So, so I'm sure they have a stance, you know, uh, they have a stance towards that. Um, Ambedkar is coming out of it. Everything is like coming out of there, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> So, um, so you see the urban to kind of wind up this part, you know, um, 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 uh, Tilak, oh, by the way, last, last thing, Tilak was very much, uh, uh, you know, supported by the, the working classes of Bombay. You know, even though they were part of the communists. 
So you see this complete uh, mishmash, you know, like a uh, intermingling. There's an admixture that's going on. It's a very powerful uh, thing going on there. Uh, so um, okay, so so that's about it. Um, uh, when you then bring, so I think there are people who have written on this. Walter Benjamin, work of art uh, in the age of mechanical reproduction. People have uh, written on it. Uh, I think Ranjani Majumdar or someone has written on it. But I don't think they are really that interesting. You know, they are just uh, using it in a very formal sense. Um, so which means that you have to yourself think through. You can use those writings to just kind of trigger some thoughts and ideas uh, in your in your mind. Um, then, of course, you can even add that, okay, but if these are the popular cultures, then maybe today uh, you also, these are also, uh, these are also the TikTok areas, you know, right? You can say these are also where TikTok is proliferating like anything. Uh, not really a little bit WhatsApp, but really TikTok. So this is a, a TikTok area. Um, so, uh, um, 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 so when it comes to the, when it comes to, uh, even the minority question, you know, okay. So, so Hadi Mastan later starts a Dalit kind of a organization. He floats a party later, you know, um, that's what he does. Um, so you see these are that kind of a place and when it comes to queer being queer you know um, also i think there is a major scene going on here you can say you can say this extremely queer you know it's extremely queer you know Queer before queer becomes fashionable. Um, so uh, that kind of a thing. Okay, so uh, so that's about it. Um, when we then try to think about the Indian context, when it uh, with uh, with Benjamin, he really takes us to this kind of a domain, right? Uh, completely mechanical, completely urban life. Uh, and, you know, so you don't really have to romanticize the lost solidarity of village communities. You don't really have to think about how people all know each other and they love each other. They live in solidarity and harmony in the villages. But the city is the space of corruption. The city is the, is the space of uh, all kinds of vices. It's a, it's a den of vice. Uh, you know, all of that gets challenged here, right? Right, so uh, so this word is going because because Benjamin
Yeah, you're right. You know, the they don't grow grain in the cities, but they make clothes, you know, they make the implements that are used to uh, used to plow the fields. Uh, and a lot of these people who are in the cities anywhere also have a live connection with the village. Uh, so they also grow grain. In fact, a lot of these people who have left Delhi with the coronavirus now, a lot of them are going and some of them said, you know, well, let's, let's all go over to the village because now the wheat harvest apparently is about to begin. So he says, okay, let's go back and we'll do some harvest. We'll work in the fields. <laughs> uh so which basically means that you don't have to also pit the city against the village or anything like that the urban versus the rural uh in fact in bombay there is the the 1981-82 there's a 18 month long strike of the bombay mill workers that's a historic strike and uh, maybe some of you where is shane shane was working on the railway strike what about the textile mill strike because the textile mill strike was such a huge working class mobilization in such an important city of India, which is also the financial capital of India, and not just like uh, uh, urban working class, but the way the urban working class is located as so core to Bombay's life. And when such a working class, um, uh, you know, uh, rises in revolt, um, it was 18 month long um, uh, strike in Bombay that actually um, sent a, 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 a chill uh, down the hearts and uh, bones of the Indian big capitalists. And, and that, was a, that was a turning point for them. The way they then thought that they have to now um, change themselves. They have, to, uh, they have to kind of change their strategy, their modus operandi. You know, and and one of the things that happened was when the strike happened, a lot of them, again, they go back to the villages because beyond a point, the people doing the strike, they cannot sustain it. There's a film called uh, Aghat by, um, I don't know. There's a film called Aghat by, I think it is uh, Govind, uh, Govind uh, uh, maybe by... Uh, maybe by Govind uh, Nilani. Uh, by Govind Nilani, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not so sure. But uh, by so that so that film really shows the Bombay working class scene. Uh, you know, that is like coming from a more like an art film kind of a thing. It's a it's that kind of film um, thing. Uh, so, uh, so I think so. I think Benjamin really then is inviting you to uh, to not fight capitalism because see, in India, okay, one of the things that has happened in India uh, is that um, of course Benjamin is not writing in India. <laughs> um, Benjamin, um, yeah, one of the things in India is that the village is still uh, performs as the. Uh, the 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 kind of imagined good uh, benign society that we still operate with you know somehow we think that the village and maybe that's the influence of gandhi the village the peasant still pure uh, you know the rural areas the villages that's where the real india lives india lives in villages that is true in a statistical sense, because majority of Indians are still in rural areas, they still live in villages, uh, blah, blah, blah. But in terms of the movement of forces and energies in the political social domain, it's the urban which kind of decides what happens next, right? Uh, the urban has that kind of a pull. Uh, so, um, um, so, um, so it's very difficult to then really reconcile a Benjaminian perspective in the Indian context. <clears throat> um, uh, so if you look at a storyteller like Premchand, Premchand is not really, he thinks that this kind of a mechanical reproduction, uh, you know, 
uh, would be really alienating. Right? Uh, do you see that? So Premchand would be like, you know, what is this? You know, <laughs> uh, I mean, and Gandhi might say, okay, what about the soul force? Where is the soul force? Where is the soul force? Right? Where is the soul force in Nakpada? <laughs> right? Where is the soul force? Basundara, you want to say something on this? What are the others today? Where is Aditya? Where is Hitesh? Where are the others here today? I can't see the participants. Ah, yeah. Shane, yeah. You know. Um... Uh, so, uh, you see, where is the soul for The urban. Okay, have you guys seen this film called Do Bika Zameen or something? I have so much to say on that film. It's such a Bimal Roy film. So this thing, you know, a lot of the stories you read, a lot of the songs. A lot of it is so much about the village, you know. So, um, 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 yeah, so the, yeah, so Premchand would have like thing, okay, no, no, you know, this is this, even, but that's what, you know, with Premchand, I was trying to check whether Premchand, what does he want to say? Because he was a communist kind of a guy, apparently, right? Premchand is a left leaning guy. You know, he's in touch with all the Chinese and Russian revolutionaries. Premchand is a progressive. I mean, Hindi literature largely is extremely progressive. I mean, the Hindi media <laughs> that we see today might be whatever. whatever. So I was checking and, and then I found that Premchand actually spent some time in Bombay. And Premchand wrote a script um, of the Mazdoor. Um, you know, Premchand, I think it's called, the film is called Mazdoor. So if you were to like Premchand, quintessential storyteller, storyteller of the experience of the peasant, right? Premchand is the storyteller, the Bauti, storyteller of the experience of the peasant. Uh, <laughs> now, when he is in Bombay, when he's in this Charles of Bombay, what does he feel like, you know? And then he writes a script, apparently, for a Bombay film. So um, uh, see if you can locate that script, you know? Um, so what happens to... Right? 
You want to ask this question? What happens there? So I think I think these are the kind of things uh, I think you can explore. Um, uh, so um, the rest of the time, uh, what we will do is um, uh, okay. Vasundara Monto second movie, Apni Nagariya. Wow, what a name! Monto second movie, Apni Nagariya. Was also based on city workers' struggle. Eighty-five percent of working force was migrated. Was people at that time? So wasn't the act? So, so if this is the case, then we want to see: Does what is the what is what is the kind of perceptual sensory space that this story by Monto Apni Nagariya defines? Right? Does he talk about? You see, there are a lot of people talking about the working classes. A lot, of, a lot of people talking about the migrant workers today with this coronavirus and everything that the lockdown. With all these migrant workers that are there, some so and everybody is doing relief work now. Everybody is doing relief work. Now the perspective with which you look at the working class might be different, even though you might show your hamdardi and your solidarity and your sympathy with the working class. But that's not all. Because you can also do show this sympathy from this moral high ground that oh we need to do something from these lowly people, but their level is not my level, or rather my level is much higher. Monto would not be doing that. I mean, we imagine Monto will not be doing that, right? So if the working class is gambling, because this might also be this lumpenized working class, right? They go to prostitutes. Uh, they watch all these cheap tacky films they do this really uh, this thing uh, messed up uh, tiktok they might be racist they might be sexist uh, they have all the vices <laughs> they do gambling so what is the sensorium that monto creates in this story uh, I think this is what we need to look up. And what, what does Premton do? So, in fact, it might be interesting to see if we can ever find the story, uh, you know, of Premton and then take up this Monto story side by side. Um, you know, there are some people who write precisely to census analyze, you know, to kind of, um, uh, to kind of, uh, um, uh, just uh, give rise to a scandal, scandalous writing, you know. Uh, so that might be just to give a shock, um, uh, uh, where you try to shock middle class sensibilities. Um, you know, um, for the effect, and that might be just a performance. So not as a performance, but someone who is actually living a life like that. So Dasal is not performing, you know. Uh, Monto would not be performing. Baudelier would not be performing. Um, oh, Aditi, yeah, you know. Uh, anyways, good to have you, even though you came late. Better, better late than never. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the um, so the so the sensorium thing. What is the sensorium? The, you see, because Benjamin is very interested in the in the new perceptions that are created. So there's a technology which comes. So the, right. And and what is and and it's not like we remain the same. The way our intellectual, mental faculties, our five senses are connected to each other. Whether we privilege the vision or the smell or the listening cap capability or the touch or the visual, like say so the visual has increased with the mobile phone, right? Uh, and not just the visual in terms of photography, but the moving picture. So, so what uh, Benjamin is saying in terms of technological reproduction, the fact that each of us can create our own images, the fact that the even the underclass 
can now flood the social media with so much images from below, like the way, the way TikTok is slowly becoming more acceptable, even in the popular media, there is an element of technological reproduction. I know we cannot stretch it too much, the Benjaminian notion of technological reproduction, because then it becomes like one is just like celebrating technology, uh, one is just kind of uh, uh, talking in terms of, uh, of the, uh, you know, a kind of a, um, a disjointed mismatch of, 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 uh, of culture and technology and, uh, and hip hop and rap and everything all combined together. Benjamin, of course, um, can lend himself to that. Uh, if we do not see his work as an overall oeuvre, you know, as an overall thing, right? Uh, so I don't want to go in that direction. Um, so people who do media, this, that, they'll just use Benjamin, only this part of Benjamin. And that's where uh, the what I mentioned in the last class, uh, about the, what did I mention in the last class about the, I think what I call the third dimension in Benjamin, that there's this other thing, which I think I didn't really go into that day. Uh, that's where it comes, right? Uh, so what we'll do, we will do another maybe 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I will take a little break. Maybe some of you need to do that too. So uh, let's again assemble uh, in some 15 minutes. Let's take a 15 minutes break. And uh, we assemble at uh, 12. Uh, uh, take a... Right, so let's take a little break and I'll be back soon. Is that okay? Shane, do you allow us a break, a 15 minute break? And then we'll do some another 15 minutes and then we'll and then we'll wind up. Shane, we are we are waiting for your order, for your permission. So what I'll do, I'll just uh so I'll just end this. There's a option here I see called end stream. So I'll just end it here. And then what I'll do, I'll again restart it uh, at uh, it's 12, 10. So 12, 30. Is 12, 30 fine for everyone? Can we assemble again at 12, 30? Can we assemble at 12, 30? Is that fine? Aditi? You've just joined. So let's, so I'll see you at, at 12. Yeah.